That's it. We're going. Oh, fantastic. Hello, everyone. Hi. Uh, it's, it's Rail Natter. Welcome. Um, it's going to be a fun one, isn't it? Uh, hopefully, there should be some fun stuff going on tonight. It's a nice, relaxed one. There's some news. There's, uh, there's, there's various bits and pieces. We'll tease next week's, which is also going to be... A, actually, it's going to be a lot more fun because uh, we're being joined by a friend. But tonight is going to be a... Gustav, yes, tonight is going to be a, an evening of Spot the Gadget Ban. Um, everyone who's in the chat, make sure you're lining up your, your mass transit systems that you want to throw at me and, and me to test. And we will do, uh, and, and by doing so, I will show you how to, to, to make the same assessments yourself. You can all shout at me about why my categorization system is wrong. So get that all ready while, while I'm going through the next few bits and going through the news and stuff. But first, we have to... Um, Oh, it's exciting. It's already happening. And it's 50-50. It's neck and neck. What am I on about? Well, I am, of course, uh, referring to the fact that, you know, last week we, we went through the proposals for the, the new North-South Main Line for Wales. Uh, we went through some maps. It was good fun. Uh, I enjoyed that. I'll probably put it into a medium piece or something to just capture what we talked about. Um, but off the back of that, we went through a competition to work out who uh, kind of what the um, what the best... Uh, what well, the best name is going to be, what you all think it should be called. And so, um, well, we, we started a competition and we, we went through the competition. So uh, let me just do this. Da, 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 da. Um, so the first three rounds uh, kind of gave us gave us initial numbers uh, and gave us kind of a ranking from one down to down to six of your favorites. And um, and the top three are battling. Well, Actually, the, the the kind of the numbers numbers two and three have already battled out. Kreuz Rail has been knocked out. Uh, Kevin Forth Camry has been knocked out. Uh, Kasseltur has been knocked out, and uh, Kavlemder uh, Ichel uh, Tree has been uh, knocked out, leaving us um, uh, with. Uh, let's just pick these out with uh, Rail Forth uh, Traus Camry and Llenelle uh, There we are. Yeah. Um, no. Dreig? No, Dreig. Ah, oh, damn, my Welsh. Damn it. Anyway, these two. Um, so, uh, they are currently battling out. Everyone, go right now. You can li literally, I'm going to drag it on screen. Look, 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 look at this. Look at this. Here, here it is. We're going we're gonna to be keeping track of this. Um, uh, you don't want to see that. Uh, we're going to be keeping track of this um, as we go, which is exciting. See how the votes go, but go in. Go vote. You can find it. I've put it out. It's on my ta kind of um, pinned tweet, so you can find out. Uh, you can find out what the yeah, kind of uh, what what the results are as we go. I'm going to be keeping tabs on those. Um, it's all good fun. So go and do that. Um, yes. Anyway, uh, do it. Get involved. So we're going to sit and we're going to have that in the background. Anyway, oh, we're going to decide what it's going to be. It is indeed at the moment. Slenetle Drag, Drag. Oh my God, Cambrian Drag, um, the Dragon Line versus. Uh, Rail for uh, Trans Cymru, which is the Trans Wales Railway. Um, I've got my personal preference, but uh, go vote, everyone, go vote. Um, Gareth, I shouldn't need to practice. It's, well, yes, I do need to practice. Practice is the issue. I, I know how to pronounce these things. I'm just out of practice because I don't spend enough time in Wales. Anyway, right, the COVID stats. That's what we're all we're here for. Some of the let's crunch some numbers, shall we? Um, uh, why was my name green? Uh, it's because I use uh, Shinigami eyes. And um, for some reason, other people have selected me to be uh, green, uh, which is a good thing, which is nice. It means that I'm uh, not a transphobe. I'm counted as someone who's actively trans friendly, which is nice. Hello, everyone. So uh, cycling is kind of doing its standard thing. Lots of nice cycling recently. Lovely road. A bit of a drop recently, but nothing particularly interesting. It's kind of been sat around the 100 percent mark. And. Um, this is oh by the way this is the uh, this is the, the for the whole the whole thing so you've seen a bit of a drop in rail that is possibly because of the holiday possibly a late effect of the timetable we'll look when we zoom in and on the year we'll we'll have a look but also buses dropped as well so I think actually it's more likely to be a result of the uh, of people not traveling as much for the jubilee weekend so let's zoom in on the year and, and have a closer look I think by the fact that the buses have dropped. And rails dropped a little bit. I think this is kind of Jubilee weekend effects. But we have sort of seen a bit of a buffered drop post timetable. So the, the timetable change happened. And we've seen a little bit of continued ridership climbing. But then it's sort of tailed off again. So I, I'm not entirely sure what that is. But let's keep an eye on it. But it's worth saying 
very much validated that the peak uh, the peak was indeed 92% uh, we've reached for, for a couple of days running. So um, so that's quite good. You know, we have, um, you know, ridership is sitting sitting at, uh, and, is li- and it's climbing again, by the way. It's climbing here uh, again, and that's the kind of the pre, that's the, the uncorrected stat so it's likely to jump a bit higher so so we're basically it's you're quite we, if anyone's asking you where ridership is say 90 percent because frankly that's where we're at 90 percent, lovely job very nice uh the news uh we're starting with the fact that last week there was a uh, another fatal derailment in the germanosphere the the uh, 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 there was a derailment near uh garmisch partenkirchen uh and you can see here it's double decker stock Pretty nasty. I, I don't. I, I don't know what's caused this. I, I don't. Not really in the loop of what this. Uh, what what's result caused this incident? I'm sure, as often happens, lots of people will be in the chat. Um. But uh, yeah, not 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 good. But it's it's worth noticing that all the vehicles, you know, these the rolling stock is modern, more pretty modern rolling stock stayed in line, um, uh, which will have reduced the you know, and it's also much more robust as rolling stock. Uh, that will help. But it is also kind of top heavy double decker stock. So uh, yeah. I, I don't know. But check check out the uh, crash report when that really gets released eventually. Um, so what's next? Ah, yeah, big stupid road project uh, was useless. Uh, yeah, funny that. So Hardigan Roundabout is something that's been on the cards for Aberdonians since forever. It's the idea that it needed upgrading somehow and that magically this would fix it. It's a big roundabout. What they've done is they've they've left the roundabout there and they've done another bigger roundabout next to it. So it's kind of like if you've got the the A ninety six coming in here like this, uh, and then uh, kind of and then there's the the A ninety comes off like this, and there's a roundabout here. This goes into into like Kitty Brewster. Uh, this goes to so this is this is to Kitty Brewster. This is to Inverurie uh, or Dice. Uh, actually, no, it is Inverurie because Dice is kind of off. Oh, there's like a junction. Here. Actually, yeah, this goes off towards Dice that way, doesn't it? Um, and and this was the A90 before the before the the Western Peripheral route was built. So this is this is the way down to uh, let's 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 just say Dundee. Um, and 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 it was always pretty congested because it's you know it's a roundabout and there's traffic. So what they've done is kind of keep this junction here and build a huge new dual carriageway here uh, with signalised crossing here and here. Signalise this and also demolished a load of houses that were here. This is absolutely bonkers. What on earth were they? What on earth were they doing? Uh, thinking this was a good idea, but they've done it. They spent fifty million quid on it. Complete waste of time. And uh, lots of people doing the poll and saying that. Um, uh, and and so like quite a few people doing a poll for the for the press and journal. Obviously not scientific, but you know it's interesting that a lot of people that a press and journal is generally going to be a pro roads reactionary uh, sort of audience. Frankly, uh, a thousand of the twelve hundred people who were. Um, polled did not believe that the this project had made any difference uh transport scotland are going to start evaluating its impact um one year from opening to see if it was worth it too late folks road expansion doesn't work it doesn't work stop doing it so yeah what a complete waste of energy and demolishing a lot of people's houses and then the houses that are in here so the houses the houses that actually are in this bit here are all now locked between two entirely locked on either side on every side by a dual carriageway just horrible absolutely horrible um uh so uh yeah Raphael is is helping us here uh, yeah i i said uh, it, it's top heavy compared to single decker stop it's not really top heavy so it's a, it's a, a worthy correction uh, Raphael, double decker stop used on a stopping service line not an express uh police are still investigating a special investigation on three railway staff for misconduct on oh, crikey um yeah, good grief. Anyway, um, hello, 750 volts DC. First time watching one of these live. Hello, 750 volts DC. Hello. Uh, Gregor is saying, uh, Hodigan is a complete farce. Inverary and Dice are same direction on that junction. Oh, uh, yeah, of course they are. Uh, um, it's not, Dice is, is that way, but because you get up to the where the Marshall factory was, right? Uh, I did used to live here. Uh, this is not to Dice. This is to, um, uh, what's it? What is it called? Don something uh, Bridge of Don. Bridge of Don is this way. Bridge of Don is this way. That's it. It's been a while. Um, wasn't there a gentleman a gentleman's club here uh, once upon a time? Uh, anyway, um, I just remember it being a slightly dubious ex garage for a while. Anyway, paved paradise, but a parking lot. Well, quite Tom. 
Anyway, what else is in the news? Ah, yes, the latest on the rail betrayal. Um, the Goldborn link has gone. Yep, HS2. I, I can't even process how depressing it is at this point. The uh, hello, hello, Jacob. Uh, the, uh, the 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 Goldborn link, which is so. If you had, if you can imagine, you had HS2. We've got HS2 here. Uh, it kind of it has the bit that then kind of goes, does this weird thing, goes into Manchester, and obviously there's the stupid underground station happening here, there's the airport station here, um, so this is obviously uh, is, is stupid. Um, this is is actually good, because it's a useful parkway, ignore the fact that it's next to the airport, it's also a very useful parkway for a lot of people kind of coming in from all manner of places uh, on that side of Manchester, so that's good. Uh, and then down here you had crew. Uh, the Goldborn link was the bit that would, if you've got the old the the old West Coast Main Line doing its thing along here, this is where it then joined and then continued onwards up to Scotland. Um, and what they've done is get rid of this bit, which now means that basically, actually, the West Coast Main. If this is crew, then the West Coast Main Line kind of does this, doesn't it? Ignore that. Um, that means that the the, the high speed two trains going to Scotland are now going to have to do this and stay on the existing railway to go north. Which, oh, what have I done? I'll go away. Um, which basically means that rather than two um, services to Scotland, um, rather than two Scotland services, uh, that's actually the Georgian flag because I didn't draw it in, in, in blue and I can't be bothered. It's fine. Uh, everyone knows which flag I mean, right? Uh, there's just going to be there's just going to be one. Uh, but that's kind of the that's the least of the issues. The issues is that this area, this this bit of railway here. Uh, this bit here, da, 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 including like Warrington and, and like Wigan is, is here. But basically all the capacity of trains kind of coming in and, and, and going in this way, uh, as well as on the West Coast Main Line itself, uh, well, no, none of that capacity is now being released. So ignore my red scribble, scribbles. Basically, absolute worst of both worlds. Now, there are some other politics going on at this point. Oh, Marley C is asking, or remember to at me in if you've got a question for me, by the way. Um... Marley C is asking, do you think there's any chance that they make a longer link that joins at Preston? So uh, rather than, so if you've got the, the HS2 bit that does that, the Manchester bit that does that, uh, uh, and then you've got Crew and then Wigan kind of here. Uh, so then you've got the, the West Coast main line kind of, good, what was it, like this, and then da 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 um, Rather than doing this, that it would, it would join in, like basically it'll join further north. Uh, I don't think it's happening. Government is basically uninterested in doing anything. So th this is just an excuse for them to not do anything. I, I, I think they're co using the cover of the Union Connectivity Review as an excuse to do nothing. So it's, it's bad news. You know, this government is just a, a bunch of liars and, and they are massively just, just cutting and cutting and cutting away strategic rail projects. So I, I don't expect, um, certainly in the medium term, that they're going to progress with it. Not this government, anyway. Interestingly... Um, yeah, some of you are already already pointing out a key fact about this, the timing of this. Um, 30 minutes before the results of the vote of no confidence vote uh, uh, yesterday, or the no confidence vote against Boris, which wasn't yesterday, it was now on, when was it, Monday, Tuesday, Monday, Monday. Was it Monday or was it, anyway, whatever it was, um, 30 minutes before those results, uh, the government scrap, did the scrapping, um, and yes, funnily enough, uh, hmm, who, Graham Brady, ah, yeah, that's right, Dead set against it. If you want to be confirmed, here's Graham Brady, MP. I'm not calling him a sir. He can go to hell. Uh, Graham Brady here, um, uh, writing to the Secretary of State for Transport, requesting the immediate scrapping of the Goldborn Spur. Uh, and that was in January 2020. He's long, it's his constituency. He's long time been an opponent, a massive opponent of it. Um, and, uh, and yeah, half an hour before the vote of no confidence, Bear, bar, bearing in mind that Graham Brady is the chair of the 1922 committee. So he's, that that's the weird Tory sort of uh, vampire group that, that like, uh, are the puppet masters of, uh, and get to say what happens in the in the Conservative Party. Uh, such a shadily named committee, the 1922 committee, just, yeah, stuck in 1922 like the party. Um, he's chair of that committee, and he was bribed with the cutting of the Goldborn link, you know, the, the, this spur before the vote. If you think that Britain's not a corrupt country, everyone, you're not paying close enough attention. This is a broken democracy that we live in right now. Anyway, uh, it's not the end of the pain, I'm afraid, because Charlotte Nichols, I'm sure does lots of good stuff, Labour MP for uh, Warring a bit of Warrington, I can't remember which bit of Warrington, or Warrington North, yeah, that'll do it, um, is here celebrating the, uh, celebrating the cutting of the Goldborn link, being challenged on it, and then speaking absolute nonsense about where the way uh, about the Goldborn link as if it was not necessary, cost far outweighed any benefits. 
removing it as a practical solution, not part of the actual line, all this sort of absolute guff that makes no sense. So, yeah, not not great. Labour, uh, there, there, there is a good reason to have whips and to, like, have a party line on things. Um, and... You know, something that's important like this that's, that's, that, uh, that rallies a lot of NIMBYs and that is being used as a political football, Labour needs to tighten ranks, frankly. Um, so, yeah, not not great. Not not great at all. Yeah, so uh, that's all been happening. Uh, this is this is Charlotte Nichols. By the way, Charlotte Nichols, Labour MP. Labour MP. So what else is going on? strikes everyone absolute solidarity with the rmt about this um I, i'm just hearing so much nonsense i'm actually in theory and has it actually been confirmed yet have i got the email confirming uh i haven't yet interesting hopefully i'll get an email confirming whether i may or may not be appearing on a certain popular morning television show actually in the studio tomorrow morning um uh about talking about this but i was on bbc york yesterday talking about it you can go and have a listen to that um i, I it was quite a nice long interview i had plenty to say um and absolutely pointing out that, yes, I know a lot of the union, the actual union channels are talking about pay specifically, but you've got to bear in mind that they're specifically referring, they're they're often talking to their members rather than to the public. Uh, maybe they're not very good. They should be doing more public facing stuff and less stuff about salaries, because this is not just about salaries. Salaries, I think, are quite a lot further down than they, uh, in terms of priorities for, for a lot of people, than the general malaise, the general attitude towards rail that this government is, is exhibiting. As I keep saying, it's the three S's. It's it's cuts to services, cuts to st- uh, it's cuts to staff, cuts to services, and eventually it'll be cuts to stations. There's the three S's that I'm saying. They're the things that we need to remember that um, uh, absolutely the thing that we need to remember um, about what the, why these strikes are happening. You know, rail is being slashed up. So absolute solidarity to the RMT. Um, uh, this is happening over Rail Week. Uh, rail Week? Rail Live. Not Rail Week. That's later in the year. Rail Live. So it's going to be interesting to see how it impact, impacts on Rail Live. Um, yeah. Uh, I, you know, if this, if a strike, if the strikes, you know, they are on, they might be called off if, a, if, if a, um, you know, if government gets involved and, and sort of does the guarantee, you know, decides to to make these guarantees or or, or meet the, the unions in the middle with a decent arrangement, but it cannot be, you know, there cannot be compulsory redundancies. You know, eight thousand staff, including two and a half thousand staff members uh, who are frontline maintenance staff, track maintenance, signalling maintenance, you know getting their jobs essentially being told to, that they're that they have to stuff it so um yeah not 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 good at all um yeah david shepherd saying the union person you saw on bbc london was talking about workers having their jobs threatened yeah absolutely good stuff uh, unfortunately the the uk is very anti anti-unions for some reason we we've kind of like the rest of the anglosphere we've taken on a really anti-union sort of general vibe since thatcher made them the baddies and and turn the police into our own personal army. So, yeah, uh, it's interesting. So, uh, you know, frustrating. But uh, back up back up solidarity with the unions. If, the only way to make the strike not happen is to encourage government to, to about turn. And they've done so many U-turns. Why can't they U-turn on this and stop slashing and burning the, the rail industry? So, uh, solidarity, RMT, uh, and to everyone who's striking. What else? Uh, oh, yeah. So uh, Navara, you know, a lot of time for Navara. I'm, I'm now one of their supporters, uh, which is nice. Uh, go, go support Navara Media. You know, we need more media like Navara um, because they are not paid by big billionaires. They're not owned by big billionaires. They are literally paid by, you know, they, they exist because uh, of subscribers, people who care about sort of subscribing, uh, supporting independent journalism. So that is good. Um, but like a lot of sort of um, progressive uh, sort of policy chat, they they were kind of uh, putting these 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 polls up, and to be fair, they were kind of broadly saying what the polls are and commenting on the polls rather than the the viability of what's being stated. But they're talking about nationalisation again, and it's just worth for a moment pointing out. Um, yeah, there's some chatting. I'll, I'll I'll go through the questions in a minute. Actually, I'll I'll go big face before we kick the episode off, and we'll go through some of the news because there's quite a lot of important news this week. Um. So there's, there's two things here. The first is British voters decisively favour public control of the railways, according to polling. It's like, yes. The thing is that we we very much have public control of the railways right now. That's that's not really the problem. The problem is that government has tighter control of the railways than it ever had before. That's not a good thing. Um, you know, it's not the dem- it's not for democratically elected people to be dealing with 
you know, deciding whether there should be undersleeper pads or deciding whether a, a, a bit of railway should or should not go ahead, really. It should be the strategic, they should be setting strategic goals and the rail industry as the experts should then progress them. Obviously, if a particular railway is causing harm, then that needs to be democratically challenged through the, the, the normal processes. But by and large, the rail industry is the, should be left to, to, to achieve the goals that government sets, such as modal shift, you know, such as carbon reduction targets. Um, Actually, what's happening is that government is setting the absolute minutia of services, minimum value. And, and yes, social, you know, social benefit services need to be set as a, as a bare minimum. But that's, that sort of thing is fairly straightforward. What government is doing is so much more than that, so much more meddling. So, oh, so this polling is really frustrating because it's like, yes, the, government, yeah, the public does support this stuff. Yes, the, the public does support cheaper railways. This is absolutely true. Um, and, and fine, and you know, it's pointing out support is highest among labor voters, but the railways are essentially de facto nationalized. You know, the private companies, there is not a massive amount, you know, the private companies running, you know, train operating companies are not a massive vacuum for pennies. You know, we don't see lo money leaching out of the rail industry via the train operating companies. We do see some money leaching out of the industry through the, the rolling stock operating companies much more than everyone, er, anyone ever really talks about. If, if we're talking about private companies or rather banks, which are kind of not private because they're half owned by the state still at this point. But anyway, uh, lots of banks that own the rolling stock leasing it at extortionate prices when it should just be owned by the train operators. Yes, that is not ideal. And that is a lot of money that gets leached out and it gets hidden because it's treated as like, you know, operating costs rather than profit. So that is an issue. But even that isn't the main reason for the problems on our railway network. The main problem for the, uh, for the issues on our railway network are structural, they're organizational and they're primarily down to treasury. So, you know, Treasury stopping ticket reform, Treasury stopping um, uh, fares from actually being reduced, Treasury stopping and blocking more trains, more infrastructure being built and procured. So, you know, uh, Treasury is the big issue and Treasury is government. So this is an oversimplistic uh, argument. And it, re it what it does is, firstly, it stops people discussing what the real problems are. Secondly, it puts a lot of pressure on things going right when nationalisation happens. As Scotland is finding out, it doesn't suddenly get all rosy when you have a nationalised, you know, a state-owned and state-controlled railway. In fact, it gets quite a lot trickier, which is fine. I think it is correct that it is fine. You know, I think it's correct that, that those challenges surface. It's all, you know, basically, uh, until recently, privatisation was essentially contracting out the blame, as I always say. It was just government paying money to private organisations to take the blame for government's own problems. That's gone. That, if that goes away, then government has to take responsibility. But they might take responsibility in a way of stripping it back, which is kind of what's happening now in the in the in the kind of English railway network. Um, so yeah, calls for nationalisation are missing the point. Um, you know, I very strongly support a state-owned, controlled, and managed railway. Uh, private operate private companies are just essentially pointless in in that process. And the fragmentation stops people. You know, used to be that if you're a, I've talked about this before, and you all know this. If you're a cleaner in the rail industry, you could eventually become a driver or a or a signaler or something uh, because you could you could progress. You could be like, oh, actually, you know what? I'm going to become a going to go from being a cleaner to being a, a a guard. Go from being a guard to a driver. You know, there is an obvious pathway now with fragmentation. There isn't. So it's the worst possible thing for skills and for um, workforce welfare. Uh, so just just get rid of get rid of them. They're pointless. But that doesn't solve a lot of the problems. That just gets rid of a pointless layer of admin. Anyway, enough of that. Uh, and to close all of this off, uh, the depressing state of the of, of the railways in Britain. There is this this gem from uh, Wendy Morton, uh, who was at the, 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 what is it, the World Conference on Railway Research that's happening currently in Birmingham. Uh, the rail minister, Wendy Morton, told the conference, and I quote, that a green economy uh, with rail at the centre is the government's agenda. It's a great joke. I, 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 I laughed. I did the uh, cry laughing emoji uh, the whole time whilst uh, reading that tweet over and over and over again. Uh, just excruciating, absolutely excruciating. Because it's just a lie, it's just a barefaced lie. What evidence is there that that's true? None at all. Frustrating as hell. Anyway, uh, so what else is going? Let's let's see what the chat is. There's so many questions have come through already. Uh, government will pass the buck on to anyone as long as it isn't them, says Gareth Williams. Adam Evans. I assume the price per mile figures are for walk-on tickets and not pre-booked ones. Yeah, it's an interesting point actually. Um, yeah, I. I the, there's some analysis that's been done, and, and ticket analysis is always dubious. The reality is that subsidy is much, you know, the, the requirement of, um, this actually looks favorable compared to a lot of comparisons, to be honest. Um, I, a lot of other comparisons, I see that the, the prices are often much higher for, for, for UK tickets. The reality is we have a very low subsidy rail network, and, and 
um, and we have a network that has not grown and so can't carry more people. There are a lot of fixed costs. If you if you have rail infrastructure and you're, you, you don't invest to get rid of bottlenecks, then you've got a lot of fixed costs on rail infrastructure that can't carry more trains. So if you invest more to improve the infrastructure, you, you invest the you invest more in more trains, then all those fixed costs of maintaining that infrastructure, if you're getting more trains out of it, then you uh, are going to increase your fare box. Uh, you know, you're going to increase the revenue, uh, your kind of your your net revenue at the end of that. So, uh, you know, but unfortunately, Treasury don't get that. Um, do you want me to go big face, Matt? Uh, uh, yeah, maybe I will actually. All right, get my large face up. Hello, everyone. I'm here. So, uh, what else is going on here? Uh, one word for Wendy Morton is Portishead. Yeah, too right, Simon Wadsworth. Uh, agreed. Uh, let's call. Let's see. Um, Lin Man Fu, nationalization is a terrible word. 1945, Labour Manifesto called for socialization. Public control is the aim, not Whitehall control. Yeah, agreed. Absolutely agree with that. Uh, Whitehall control is not really necessarily democratic. Um, so, yeah, not, not great. Martha, I'm once again saying that demanding people pre book everything for a reasonable fare and have no flexibility in spite of a frequent service isn't an acceptable situation. Yeah, fully agree. Lots of people don't have the option to, to, to book ahead. You know, um, the people who have the luxury of time and being able to plan often aren't, aren't the people who can book ahead. So that means they're just basically priced. Up. People who don't have that control are priced off the railway. Um, uh, yeah, I agree, Martha. I, I, I do. I don't like the adenoidal. Oh, but uh, you can go on to the split my ticket dot are you and uh, procure a, a 16 split ticket and it will cost you 17 pounds 45 instead of 420 pounds. Yeah, that's not the point. Most people can't and don't want to do that. Rightly so. Um, uh, and Lynn Manfield is pointing out that the average fares rise or subsidy rises yeah yeah sure um, subsidy needs to rise basically uh, but of course the challenge to get more people onto rail is that we don't have the capacity to do so safely uh, anyway let's trace back up and see what else is going on what lovely questions have you got all oh, there's lots of discussion um, Navarra are very good Marvin's pointing out uh, Navarra are very good but sometimes join in with the circular firing squad thing yeah that's very true uh, everyone should join a union absolutely correct yeah um uh, let's see what else have we got uh lovely 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 uh whips are anti-democratic <sighs> yeah that's one for a whole political discussion isn't it uh that's a pub discussion i think i know rail is supposed to already be a pub discussion but that's like a double pub discussion uh yes and no i think there is value for major strategic stuff like that there is value in there being a a party line um on, I don't think that's like a, a subject of the heart. You know, for example, I think there should be a party line on on things like trans rights. That's not. I don't care what individual personal opinion is. That's a set objective right and wrong thing. There should be a party line on that, and and, and people don't deviate from it. Um, I think there are things where where whipping people to to fit the party line is the right thing to do. Um, uh, da, 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 da. Uh, Raphael is just saying, read that derail regarding the the, the Garmisch Partenkirchen derail. Yeah, five people have been killed in that. Sorry, yeah, that, I should have mentioned it. It's really not not good. Um, uh, yes. So, uh, what's going on here? Photo and letter heading really ego much. Oh golly. Anyway, right. Okay, let's go down here. So, uh, lots and lots of good discussion. Fegel um, Schaftung. Uh, no, Fegesel Schaftung. Is that, I can't see if there's an umlaut there. Is that Schäftung or Schaftung? Anyway, yeah. Um, thanks, uh, Raphael. Uh, that is what it's called in German. Uh, Gesellschaft Society. Yeah, Gesellschaft Society. Yeah, that's it. Um, anyway, right, enough of this. Let's 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 get on with... Um, yeah, basically, the theme of all this is that everything is fine. So what we're going to do is distract ourselves with a silly episode of Rail Natter where we do some fun, ridiculous, categorizing, categorizatifying, uh, yeah, of uh of of public of, of transport come on let's do it enough of this waffle um let's 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 uh let's crack on City 225 fading away. Isn't that nice? Shall we see how the uh, see how the vote's going? Oh, it's going. Uh, it's ooh, 104 votes so far. Half an hour left. Ah, the Dragon Line is winning so far. Interesting. Okay, very nice. Well, I'm glad to see it. Um, 
Uh, whips, ministers, discussion. There's lots of nice politics discussion happening. Yeah, split ticketing appears a fair bit abroad too. Uh, some far cheaper services splitting at stations in Germany too. Yeah, interesting stuff. So... This, this whole episode harks back to um, to Light Rail is Not a Metro, um, which was episode 21. Bloody Nora, nearly 100 episodes ago. Crikey, Mikey. Um, uh, and, uh, oh, let's get my miniaturized face up. Hello, everyone. I'm in the corner. Yes, I've had a haircut. Uh, I did. I had it. At, uh, I, I had my haircut at like a hipster hair place rather than my normal, sort of just normal haircutting place. And, oh my goodness me, they took so long. Just like changing between different devices and coming back and just snipping like a millimeter off and then changing another device and then wibbling it and brushing it and doing some more stuff and snipping it also they chopped my sideburns off without any without asking which was very rude uh they nearly went for the mustache wasn't happy about that leave the mustache alone uh and uh and and also kept like trying to style it and then without asking me they sprayed some stuff in it which was made it really sticky and horrible uh so uh yeah uh, uh, Sorry, I'll be coming back to my. I'll be going back to the cutting station in York. My lo the lovely, lovely people at the uh, the cutting station in York who cut my hair and do a wonderful job of it. Um, and basically, they follow my instruction, which is make it like a Lego man from the nineteen nineties. Anyway, right. Uh, Light rail is not a metro. Another gripe. So that was the episode. And in that, we were kind of discussing uh, why why am I angry about things being called metros that aren't? And 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 oh yeah, wait, wait, wait. the reason for that is because. Um, it gives an excuse. It means people can say that they're doing. It comes into sort of some of the gadget band logic of like they can say they're creating a wonderful thing, and actually they're not creating a wonderful thing. They're doing something that's less than a wonderful thing, um, and uh, and might be inappropriate for the for the capacity. As Saul so, so earlier was griping and saying, oh, actually buses are some prof professor of economics at West at LSE or or University of Westminster or whatever it is was saying, oh, you know, buses are actually better than rail. They're cheaper and they're easier and they're I don't know what the fuss is about. You know, rail, trams have a much higher fixed cost. And they're no good. It's like, well, firstly, you don't know what the hell you're talking about. Secondly, buses are fantastic. Don't get me wrong. And actually, the, the, the calling buses a metro is annoying because it makes out as if buses aren't sexy and cool and fine and good. It's like you don't need to call buses a metro. They're good. Buses are good. Just call them buses. That's great. Um, the, 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 but this, this professor was pointing out that, that Trump, you know, and then someone else came in backing them up and saying, you know, I don't know what the fuss is. You know, all the rail centric people, all railway people, you know, focusing on. No, 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 no. Steel wheels on steel rails are hugely energy efficient compared to, to t rubber tires. And when you, and, and, and at lower levels of, of need of, of capacity, that's not such an issue because if you've got a smaller vehicle, um, the, the offset in energy efficiency comes from the fact that you don't need to build any fixed infrastructure because it's running off into a village to serve, you know, a village of 350 people. Fine. When you're running a bus, an intensive bus service in, say, I don't know, hmm, central Manchester um, or, I don't know, all of Leeds uh, or so many places in the UK that have intensive bus services that, that actually do the that, that do damage to roads um, that, that are carrying, you know, two, three, four, five thousand passengers per hour per direction at peak. And um, those cause damage to roads. Um because of the lack of because of the impact of the lack of energy efficiency of the undesigned system. You know, tire you know, a, a, a a rubber tired system like a bus versus a tram. Uh, buses are about fifteen percent as energy efficient per passenger. You know, so you're having to burn eighty five percent more. No, that's not how the mass works. But basically, you're having to burn substantially more, a substantial amount more energy to move a passenger around using a bus than you do a tram. Um, and that, as I say, that's offset fine by the lack of infra heavy infrastructure at fringes. But in heavy infrastructure cores, um, for example, someone sent me the Brisbane inverted commas metro earlier which we'll we'll use as the first example on this because i think it'll be fun to show you how this works um the brisbane metro as it's called it is not that there's no uh it, it's it's tire on tarmac so it's it's a bus folks um it's got three thousand but it is carrying three to four thousand passengers per hour which is about as much as metrolink does which you can see in the picture here um what th no do what do a tram <laughs> do a tram uh, because the energy efficiency is, is worth it very quickly once you get up to those sorts of levels and the damage that you'll do to the roads, the extra surface, resurfacing or strengthening you have to do, just build a tram. Anyway, so that's why it's really important to to, to just actually have a... Um, uh, yeah, exactly. Roads aren't fixed costs, uh, sarcasm, says Adam Evans. Yeah, exactly. Um, uh, guided busway, Cambridgeshire Council's guided busway was stupid. It should have been at least a tram, if not. Uh, th th basically, they should have used Metrolink's technology. They should have kept the railway there and um, uh, and kind of put tram train on it. But anyway, that's uh, that's that's for another story. 
so there, so in that episode, we kind of went through and listed off a load of things. And these were kind of some of those categories I used in that episode. And actually, I don't agree with any, almost any of these anymore. So um, here are some people movers. We'll, we'll define what I think these actually count as soon. Um, so there's whatever they are. There's a people mover. Lovely. Uh, there's some trams. Lovely. Trams are great. Light rail doesn't exist. Not a thing. So uh, this categorization that I created in that episode, uh, we're, we're putting a line through it. Meaning capacity systems, light rapid transit, meaningless, very confusing. I'm never calling anything this again. Uh, rapid transit, again, meaningless, pointless designation that doesn't mean anything to anyone. Uh, metro rail, ditto, doesn't make any sense. Commuter rail, what what is the difference between that and that? It's nothing, it's just a word. Um, the theme of all of this, the key thing for all of this is capacity, capacity, capacity. Forget what the system, you know, the, the, you have to think, you know, people will say, oh, you're just being too technology centric. No, that's the opposite of what I'm doing. I'm saying that the technology, you can't do certain things with certain technologies. Um, for example, if you've got a system like the, 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 the ridiculous, like New Jersey, like bus network thing that goes into central Manhattan, uh, that, that, that goes through the tunnel that, what is, that's like so many buses such a useless system for moving people around uh just absolutely bizarre the whole that whole commuter bus thing is bonkers and um, that's not what buses are for folks that's a really bad inefficient way to do anything so um certain types of mode are absolutely uh absolutely relevant and applicable for certain levels of capacity and so it's all about capacity capacity and frequency are ultimately the things that people care about capacity really is a is a is a measure of both vehicle capacity and 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 service frequency so for me, it's about system capacity. Capacity, capacity, capacity. What is that system delivering? If it's a passenger railway, the passenger transport system, it's delivering people, therefore capacity is key. And here is the system. I'm just going to dive straight into it. Here it is. Let's, let's not beat around the bush. This is going to be an episode where we basically have this one slide up and then all of you tell me uh, kind of systems and I'll put it on that screen and we'll Google them and um, and it'll allow us to, to, to look at, uh, guess some capacities. I'll do some sums. It's going to be a fun interactive episode. So this is the system. This is the urban transport system sorter, the not a metro sorter. Um, and, and so basically what we're doing is you, you, you start here, uh, trace in, and, and immediately I'm asking the capacity question. Does it carry more than 10,000 passengers per hour per direction? If the answer is yes, then okay, great. Ask the next question. Does it carry more than 20,000 passengers per hour per direction? Now, these numbers really are, um, so above or below 10,000 is, is um, what I would call below 10,000 is not hugely intensive. Above 10,000 is reasonably intensive. Um, above 20,000 is intensive. That's an intensive system. So um, so as you continue down, you know, yes. And if you keep saying yes, so it's steel wheels, steel rails, yes. Uh, it doesn't have any on-street running. Uh, no, good. Uh, it does have dedicated tracks. Yes. Well, it's a metro. Hooray, it's a metro. And to be honest, even if it's less than 20,000, no, it's not, it's less than 20,000, but it does have steel on steel, no on-street running, uh, dedicated tracks. It's a metro again. So that's the way this works. You follow through the system, um, you're still thinking that Hyperloop is a bus. Yeah, I, I think Hyperloop is a bus. Hyperloop is a bus. Folks, Hyperloop is a bus. Um, so, uh, so yeah, we're going to go through and, and, and going to go through some various systems. Yeah, everyone, go and find systems to try and break this. That's part of the fun, right? Um, uh, Xander is asking the question, where do we put... Well, I'll tell you what, let's... let's it's categorization time. Let's, let's do this thing. Hooray! But first, we're going to just quickly... How, how, how are these doing? Uh, I'm going to just F5 this to see. Let's just uh, give it a quick refresh. How are we doing? Uh, 67. Uh, yeah, the, the 19 minutes left, folks. Get your votes in. Get your votes in. Anyway, right. So categorization time. Let's do this thing. So um, let's start with the Brisbane Metro. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to go Brisbane Metro. Uh, there we go. Uh, going to go in here. Going to get the Wikipedia page up. Uh, so I should have. What I should have done is there we are. Uh, F11. So here's the, the Wikipedia page for the Brisbane Metro. And, and I'm just going to use this to show. Um, so, so you can pick all your various systems. So we've got here. So we've got the sort of information you need. You need a frequency and a vehicle capacity. So uh, this is saying 170 vehicles, um, 170 passengers per vehicle. And it's saying here, there's a, there's a thing here saying three minute headway. So uh, what does that mean? Uh, well, it means, let me get calc up. Let's get the old calculator up, shall we? Let's drag it over here. There we are. So what was that? That was, um, so uh, 60 divided by 3 is equal to 20. And we're going to multiply that by 170. And that gives 3,400, which is our passengers per hour per direction. Great. That's, uh, that's the number that we need to answer the first question. So the Brisbane Metro, folks. Um, so we're going to say, what color are we going to? Are we going to do multiple colors? Uh, let's, let's, let's sort of 
I don't know how we're going to do it. I might delete it. I might not. So Brisbane Metro, we're going to go along here. It's uh, it does not. It's not more than 10,000 passengers per hour per direction. So we're going down here. Uh, okay. Uh, steel wheels on steel rails. Uh, no, it's a bus. Um, uh, so um, uh, no. Uh, is it suspended? Uh, no, it isn't suspended. So we're going to go this way. Um, does it have more than 10 people per vehicle? Uh, yeah, it does. Okay. So it's a bus, which is fine. It's a bus. Just call it a bus. That's that's fine. Buses are great. Here it is. This is what it's going to look like. Uh, it, it's, it's a bus. Yeah, it's a bus. Uh, so, uh, yeah, uh, whatever. Uh, oh, what have I done here? I broke, I broke it. Anyway, uh, let's close that. Well, all right. So lots of people have hit us up. Uh, rubber tired lines of the Paris Metro. So um, let's do this thing. So Paris Metro line one. Uh, actually, Xander, I didn't actually answer your question, did I? Uh, Deirdre is getting very excited and, and sharing dragons, which I'm quite pleased about. Um, Am I talking? Oh, Deidre's actually asked a question. Uh, are you talking about a system or a particular transport corridor? I'm talking about a system. So this is a system. This is a, me a means of categorizing systems. So um, uh, let's see. What that does it have headways on here? Uh, 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 one thing to do is do TPH as a search. No uh, headway. No minute. No. That noise is very loud and annoying for all of you. Uh, how many trains? Oh, someone's going to tell me uh, trains per hour. Uh, train per hour. Let's do hour search. Oh, it's all the searches I normally do to get a capacity system out of a system. Uh, it's actually going to automation history. No, I kind of want. It's actually a really useless. This is a really bad. Uh, this is a really bad article, uh, like Wikipedia page. There needs to be a standard thing that has capacity in it, really, because that'd be very useful. Go on, someone tell. Go on, go on, someone here find the. Um, System capacity. In any case, it's oh, da, 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 da. basically. I know the. I kind of know the answer to this. So let's rather than dead air, let's let's get through. So, um, the Paris Metro is. Uh, it does carry more than ten thousand passengers per hour per direction. Yes, it does. Um, and I think Line One actually does carry more than. Wait a minute, what was it? I think it does carry more than twenty. So yes. Um, so here we go. Steel wheels on on steel rails. No, it doesn't have steel wheels on steel rails, which means. It's a gadget ban. Sorry, folks. It's a gadget ban. Uh, the text says 3,000 passengers per hour per direction for the Brisbane Metro, but it's not included. I I'm giving it the benefit of the doubt and bumping it up as well. So, uh, what else have we got here? Xander, did I actually answer your question? I didn't, did I? Where, where were you? Xander's question was... Oh, golly. No, ferry, hovercraft, catamaran. This is land-based. Yes, I know that you can have ferries and all sorts of things, but this is, no, this is just land-based uh, transport. Right, Xander asked, where do we put tram systems that are half dedicated tracks and half on street? Um, well, they're on street then, aren't they, uh, is my answer to that. Um, so if you're doing it by segment, it's it's on street. So do I do it by line. So if that, if that line has some street running, then it has street running. Um, right, where are we? Let's go down here. Uh, next. Rubber Tired Lines Paris Metro, done that. Uh, that was uh, Mike Waldridge. Thanks, Mike. Pineapple Man 3, uh, Japan's new maglev thing. Oh, Chuo Shinkansen. Uh, Chuo Shinkansen, let's start. Chuo Shinkansen, it does carry just more than 10,000 people. Yes, good. So we're going this way. Uh, it does not carry more than 20,000 people. Fine. Does it have steel wheels on steel rails? No, it doesn't. Uh, so it's a gadget ban. They are. You kind of expected it. Right, what's the next one? Um... Uh, a system that I think breaks it in my Twitter DMs, says Michael C. Okay, well, let's let's do that. Uh, let's see. Uh, let's... Where is it? The... Oh, the stupid... That thing. I'm actually going to do a, a measure of that thing. It's the stupid gyroscopic uh, Dahar Insat thing. Uh, what, what is the Dahar Insat gyro... Dahar Insat... Uh, what is it? Uh, what is it? In in insat. Uh, what is it? Gyroscope thing. Uh, where was it? Oh, that's not worked. What is it? Oh, anyway, where, where, where where is that gyroscope transport system? Uh, so the pictures of there we go. Dahir insat gyroscopic transport system. Uh, it's nonsense. Total nonsense. It's this thing. It's this thing here. Uh, this this thing here, which is just made up, it's just total rubbish. Um, you can see it here; it's it's just nonsense. This uh, presumably will travel. So let's let's go. You think it breaks it though? So let's see. It will not carry more than ten thousand passengers per hour per direction. I think it does have. It, it's gyroscopic, so it doesn't travel on steel wheels. 
Um, and I got I used to have Guideway, but I've changed it, so it's just suspended. It's not suspended, no. Um, does it carry more than 10 people per thing? Yes, so it's a bus. Those are buses, folks. They're just buses. That was fun. Um, uh, Matt Reed thinks this is too complicated compared to the, the, the bus. It's not too complicated. Once you start working it, it's very straightforward. Uh, let's see. Uh, Nathan L is asking about Dial-A-Ride. Oh, golly. Uh, Dial-A-Ride, well, it depends on the system, doesn't it? For the most part, Dial-A-Ride doesn't have more than 10,000 passenger per hour direction. It doesn't use steel and steel. It's not suspended. It does carry 10 per plus, plus people per vehicle, so it's a bus. They're buses. Uh, that's an easy one. Um, Sheffield Super Tram. Ah, yeah, good point. Right, I think I've got... Now, I'm going to have to quickly go go in here. I think I've got an actual spreadsheet that allows me to look at some some data like that. So if I go in here, uh, we are urban transit data. Let's have a look. So I think I've got some data about... So Sheffield Super Tram, currently its best uh, passage per hour per direction is about 4,000, 4,020. Okay, so um, does that match everyone's understandings? Hopefully it does. So if we go for, by the way, feel free to look up the passenger power per direction numbers with your thing as well. So uh, Sheffield Super Tram, uh, it's not more than, uh, oh yeah. Oh no, that's fine. It's not more than 10,000 passenger power per direction. Uh, it does have steel on steel rails, yes. Uh, it does have on street running, yes. So it's a tram, it's a tram. That's, that's fine. Sheffield Super Tram is a tram, nothing uh, controversial there. Um, Perugia, uh, ooh, Martha Lauren, as in the, right, here we go, Perugia, uh, transport, uh, transport, there we are, so there's the, what are they, is that the fancy sort of bus tram thing, uh, what is that, what is, I know what you mean, it's like a sort of a half, where is it, oh, there we go, I'm trying to find a picture of it, uh, let me see, let me find out, oh, mini metro, the Perugia mini metro, yeah, that's it, how, what is the Perugia Mini Metro? We're doing it. Oh, in fact, you know what? I had a window, didn't I, for that? So you can look at it. Where is it? Here we go. Perugia Mini Metro. Let's see if this works. Mini Metro. Right. Is this the right one? Oh, yeah, that's it. Uh, automated People Mover. This is immediately giving me, like, uh, badget, gadget band sort of shivers. Um, so I'm, I'm thinking there's a decent chance that it's not going to do well. But let's have a look. So it's carrying 10,000 passengers per day. That's no use. So let's see. What's its headway? We need its headway here. It says 8,000 passengers per hour, but it doesn't say per, whether that's per direction or not. So, um, hmm. Uh, hmm. I, uh, hmm. It doesn't really have the information we need to judge here. Also, what's it sitting on? It's sort of sitting on rubbery, tiredy guideway. Is it, is it steel wheels on steel rails, but just weird guideway? Kind of hard to tell. Uh, Martha, feel free to send me your thoughts. I'm going to go with 8,000 passengers per hour per direction. Let's give it the benefit of the doubt, right? Who else is it? If, even if it's four, it would make a difference. So, judging that, I would say it's not... Ca let's let's clean this up. So, it's uh, not got... Uh, not carrying more than 10,000 passengers per hour per direction. It's not carrying steel on steel. It's not suspended. So, it's a bus. It, it's a bus. Oh, wait. Did it have 10 plus people? Because if it didn't, then it's a it's a car. It's technically a car, so it's it's either of those two. Uh, that's that's what I'm saying. But if it if it's uh, yeah, that's that's my thoughts. Let's see. Uh, but, 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 but bus rapid transit doesn't exist. Agreed. Yeah. Texas self is DLR. Oh yeah, DLR. So the DLR is where are we? Docklands Light Railway currently has a, a capacity of thirteen thousand passengers per hour per direction. Oh, this is an interesting one. Let's do the DLR. Yeah. Okay, DLR. <laughs> The DLR. Would it be easier if I did this in a different color, by the way? What do you think? Uh, anyone for a different color? Yeah, okay. No. So, DLR. Uh, let's start here. It does carry more than 10,000 passenger per hour per direction. Yeah, it doesn't carry more than 20,000, so no. It does have steel wheels and steel rails. Yes. DLR does not have on the street running, does it? No. Does it have dedicated tracks? Yeah, it does, actually. Oh, look. It's a metro system. Hooray! The DLR is a metro. Yay! Well done, DLR. Uh, let's see. Uh, Snow Piercer Intercontinental Plane Replacing Train established 50,000 passengers per hour gadget ban. Victoria, uh, I'm thinking it's uh, I'm thinking it's a gadget ban. Motorbikes are uh, they they don't carry more than 10 per pe 10 people per vehicle, so it's it's a car. Uh, 
Super ca Tram does not have a cape. Uh, Ned Carlson, perhaps the real answer is to say if you aren't happy with the result on a given system, it can alternately be turned uncategorizable bullshit. That's true, Ned. You're absolutely right. Yep, very good point. Uh, Transatlantic Concord is not land-based, uh, much as it'd be fun to categorize. Um, uh, the Kai AD says, uh, I think I have a better categorization system, my own subjective reading of vibes. Yep, fair. Um, uh, oh, the Scarborough Cliff Lifts uh, asks Will. Very good question. Uh, they do not carry 10,000 passengers per hour direction, no. Um, they do have steel wheels on steel rails, yes. Uh, do they have on-street running? No. Do they have dedicated tracks? Yes. So, there we are. According to this, those are light metro systems. There are, that was an interesting, uh, an interesting uh, conclusion. Didn't see that coming. So, Scarborough has a load of metro systems, light metro systems, but metro systems nonetheless. There you go. There's a mind blower for the day. But that, you know, the system doesn't lie. It doesn't lie. Maybe I need an angle of tracks situation, right? Um, uh, or, or means of mode. If it's cable hold, then perhaps it can't be a light metro. So there's a there's a, there's a note to self uh, that maybe it needs to have like a cable hold sort of uh, condition here somewhere, uh, and that might help with the categorization. There we are. I, 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 well, you've successfully broken it. Uh, that's good. Al is asking the Cheshire branch of the Metropolitan Line, uh, which is after all the original metro. Hmm. Does the Cheshire branch have any level crossings on it? I don't think it does, does it? I think it is all bridges. Someone catch me on that one. Also, how many trains did the Cheshire branch run? Oh, I can't remember. Hmm. Um, uh, let's see. So, uh, bu -bu 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 oh, I'm so far behind. Emirates cable car. Oh, yeah, the cable. So, the, Emir the, the Dangleway, uh, it does not carry more than 10,000 passengers per hour. It doesn't have steel wheels and steel rails. It is suspended. It's a dangleway. That was easy. Lovely. Very good. Um, the Leon Metro. Now, the Leon Metro, is that the one that is neither a tram? It's actually a bus, technically, or they converted it yet. Someone come back. Subway, come back to me with the with that one. Cologne Stadtbahn. So Stadtbahn, uh, yeah, 10-minute uh, headway per line. Same vehicles as Manchester Croydon. So if it's 10-minute headways, it's probably less than 10,000 passengers per hour. So... Um, that means that the um, uh, a system I'm a big fan of and have used quite a lot, by the way, Cologne Stadtbahn, uh, steel on steel, uh, on street running. Yes, it's a tram, which is which is fine. Uh, if it's dedicated tracks, then it would be a light metro. I can't remember where the Stadtbahn is. Is uh, yeah, the is the, the Stadtbahn does ha does the Stadtbahn have some on street running sections? I think it does, doesn't it? Yeah. Anyway, so I think it's a tram. Uh, Right. Oh, my goodness. So many here. Oh, the Stoospan. Oh, my God. The Stoospan. Uh, it's not more than 10,000 passengers per hour per direction. It does have steel wheels on steel rails. Um, it doesn't have on-street running. It does have dedicated tracks. It's a light metro. Oh, there we go. Clearly, if it's cable hauled, I need to, there needs to be some sort of uh, additional verifier there, doesn't there? Ned Carlson. Uh, Trans Lord Bombardier uh, GLT. Uh, steel rail plus rubber tires. Uh, it's a gadget van. Oh, that's a good point. If it depends, so if it's uh, if it's less than ten thousand passengers per hour per direction, then it probably ends up being a bus. If it has more, if it's carrying more than ten thousand, then it ends up being a gadget van, uh, because basically anything that's carrying more than twenty thousand should be on steel wheels. That's essentially the motto of this story. Um, so it's yeah, Peruga, Peruga People Mover is a bus. Lovely. Thanks for the confirmation, Sir Corot. Yes. Uh, where are we? Oh my goodness, I'm falling down. How strict is dedicated tracks bit? Since that would, wouldn't that technically make parts of the underground, underground suburban heavy rail? Arundel, yes. Uh, this gets confusing, doesn't it? Because the fact that you have some mix running on parts of the London uh, underground or some of the subsurface lines does indeed mean that those become heavy suburban rail rather than uh, metro lines. Because I the whole point is that this is showing, you know, ideally you have totally segregated running to optimize. There are some fringe cases, and I think the underground really is a fringe case where you'd say, well, yeah, that's a sort of a fringe case, fine. It's not the norm. But, uh, you know, it is regular running. So uh, who's going to chuck me um, Who's going to the next one, which I think is important? We need to check some of the other. We need to check two. The Glasgow subway is one we need to check. So Glasgow subway is uh the glasgow subway i believe uh carries around about oh, let me just check what is it yeah it's not it's not great folks Four thousand passengers per direction so that's it that's it no it doesn't carry more but it is steel wheels and steel rails 
Uh, there's no on-street running, and it does have dedicated tracks, so it's a light metro. So it doesn't get to be called a metro, but it's a light metro. So we'll give it that. Another one that's important is the Tyne and Weir metro, which is about 5,000 passengers per hour per direction, or possibly 10,000. I can't remember. Did someone correct me on that? Anyway, I think it's 10,000. Uh, let, let's, let's go with... No for now, because I think it's 5,000. But if someone corrects me and says it's 10,000, then fine. I think it's, it's 5,000 past the proper direction, which, again, it's going to be... It's going to go down here. It has no on street running, but it, uh, and it doesn't have dedicated tracks, which makes it light suburban rail. It's not a metro system. Uh, yes, so there we go. And that's going to remain the case, because they're going to be running in amongst um, freight on the on the Jarrow branch, so not ideal. What else here? What have I missed? Oh, there's so many coming through. Uh, where are we? People are apologising at me, which I presume is people actually shouting at me. Uh, uh, Leo Metro is like rubber tire uh, Metro. I've got confused with Leal. Thanks to Corrett. Yep, I have got confused with Leal. Uh, incline lifts on the Elizabeth line. I count those as active travel infrastructure. It's a bit like travel layers. They don't count. Oh my goodness, so many things here. We've done some funicular railways. Oh, I'm so far behind. Uh, min number of stops to get on the flow chart. <laughs> Yeah, uh, do lines like Thameslink count as having dedicated tracks? Uh, no, so that's a good example. So if we did Thameslink, Thameslink has a capacity of 40,000. So it's right the way up here. Yes, steel wheels and steel rails, yes. on shoot running, no. Dedicated tracks, no. So it's heavy suburban rail, yeah. Uh, Blackpool trams, last si time uh, I said that it wasn't a tram. Ah, strange. Uh, Blackpool tram, let's have a look. I think I've got it on my system here. I hope I do. Do I? I damn well should do. Blackpool Tramway, here we are. Uh, it has a system capacity of 13,000 ish. Uh, 13,000, great. Yes. Uh, that's, that's pretty good, actually. Where is that? Blackpool Tramway. Oh, 13, no, sorry, 1300. That's right. Good grief. No, but it's still wisdom steel rails. It does have on street running, so it's a tram. See, my old system was actually a bit rubbish. I've fixed it. We've fixed it. Fox Electric Railway. Oh, there we go. Fox Electric Railway. Uh, no. Yes. Uh, yes. Because it is sort of on street running, isn't it, really? Uh, tram. If not, then I'm going to go with light suburban rail because it's not dedicated tracks. I'm pretty sure it's mixing it. And anyone can correct me on that. If it's dedicated tracks, then somehow Fox Electric Railway is becoming a light metro. There we are. That's good fun. You can all... Basically, I'll put this image up afterwards and you can all go in and have fun doing your own categorizations. Uh, you, can, you can all play with it yourself. Oh, you kind of feel like the less than 10,000 branch should be able to reach gadget ban. I think it's almost more insulting to say, actually, no, it's fine, but it's just a fancy bus or car. I think that's why I've gone with, with categorizing it the way I have. Uh, oh, my goodness. So, right. Oh, oh. We've got one minute left. Oh, but I'm not going to tell you the answer. I'm not going to tell you the answer. Just to let you know that your, your voting time is up. Your voting time is up. Oh my goodness, this escalated quickly. It took up ages of time. Uh, clearly, there's more Twitter fun to be had with this. Um, uh, how would I class lines like Croydon Tramlink or Manchester Metrolink? They're a mix of dedicated and on shoot running. Well, you go with the, the less good one. So I would say that uh, both those systems end up being um, uh, tram systems, don't they? So let's, let's pick one, actually. Let's go with, uh, first of all, Manchester Metrolink, which has... Uh, it has less than 10,000 uh, passengers per hour capacity. It does have steel wheels and steel rails. Uh, it does have some on-street running, so it's a tram. And, and you, you're going to find the exact same trajectory for um, uh, for Croydon Tram as well. Uh, let's see. Oh, my goodness. So, oh, I've, right. Oh, my goodness. San Francisco cable car system. Hmm. Oh, we've not done any, like, dangleways, have we? Oh, the Starbridge Shuttle as well. Oh, my goodness, the Starbridge Shuttle. The Starbridge Shuttle. So the Starbridge Shuttle has... Um, it's less than 10,000 passengers per, per direction. It's steel wheels and steel rails. It doesn't have on street running. Um, it does have dedicated tracks, though, doesn't it? Or does it? It does run on dedicated tracks, so it's a light metro. Ah, I like this. Light metro. There we go. Um, see, I've been nice. I've given things that weren't previously metros a chance to have the word metro in them. I'm being nice. I'm being friendly. South Shoreline. Okay, let's have a look at the South Shoreline. South Shoreline. There we go. Do another one. Uh, there we are. Electrically powered interurban. Oh, it's an interurban. Oh my god, look at this. Legendary. Uh, it's an interurban. Um, it's one of the last surviving interurban trains in the US. Uh, let's see. 20 trains, uh, eastbound trains operating on the timetable. So, how many. What's the headways? 
they look like they're like two an hour. Uh, uh, what's the capacity? Let's see. Oh, there's just no useful information here. How many people fit in these trains? Uh, capacity 93. Are we going with nine, 93 is how many people fit in the train? Looks like a long train to just have 93 people fitting in it, to be honest. Uh, this is actually not that easy to do when everyone's there watching. Uh, oh, here we go. So 50... Oh, God. How do I know how many people... Oh, someone in the chat... Tell, basically, I'm going to do a guess on what this one is by, by looking at it. The fact that it's got on-street running is going gonna, is gonna to define it, and I think it won't... Judging by those frequencies, I'm thinking... I'm thinking that... This system is not going to carry more than 10,000 passengers per hour per direction. It is steel wheels on steel rails. It has some on-street running. So as an interurban, it's a tram. That's the, uh, that's the answer to that one. Uh, 93 per carriage, possibly, who knows. It's kind of moot point. Um, it's passengers per hour for the, for by, by line uh, and really by segment of line. But by line really is how you do it. Uh, oh, my God. Oh, here we go. Let's do the Bolivian. Let's do the Bolivian. Um, uh, let's do just that. The... Uh, let's go up here and go for the, uh, let me see, it is the, bop, bop, bop. Uh, da, 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 car Bolivia. Let's see if this works. It didn't work. Let's do this and see if Wikipedia's weak system function is going to work. Here we go. I think this is the, here we go, yeah. Number of lines, it's got 10 lines, one is in planning. 36 stations, lovely. Uh, lots of vehicles. System average. Okay, fine. Whew, how are we going to work this out then? So let's see. We want. Uh, let's see. Uh, hour. We can have the word hour in it. That's good. Per hour. Uh, oh, most lines have a maximum capacity of three thousand. So let's go with four thousand. Let's give it the benefit of the doubt. So it's four thousand. Oh man, look, at, look how awesome that is. Very awesome. Four thousand passengers per hour per direction. So, um, we have. Uh, 4,000 passenger per hour per direction. Uh, steel wheels and steel wheels, no. Suspended, yes. It's a dangle way. Well, there we go. It kind of answered its question. Um, heavy tram. People are asking about heavy tram. Heavy tram is a thing. Budapest has a few. Uh, you can't call it tram because it's so intensively used. Like, it's 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 very intensively used. Um, so I'm calling it its own thing because, really, it should... It, 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 it's kind of quite a... Yeah, I'm almost begrudgingly calling it what it what it is because it has on street running i can't think of a better name for it but the, it, i'm just calling it heavy tram because of the you know the number of people moving it the number of trams and the size of the trams you have to run to get those sorts of capacities more than ten thousand passes per hour uh, requires a pretty meaty system oh right okay so that's enough of that the shanghai maglev is a gadget band tom i can do that one without looking the um the 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 vuppertal dangleway is a dangleway because it doesn't have more than ten thousand passes per hour i don't think and if it does, then it's a so it's either it's either a dangleway or it's a gadget ban, depending on whether it has more or less than ten thousand passengers per hour per direction. Oh, you know what I think though? I think it's time that I brought OBS back up so I work out what the hell's going on. Uh, it's time that I then go uh, go in here and just sort of go. Uh, if it's a metro, great. The whole point of this is if it's a metro, great, great stuff. If it's not a metro, this can also be great. Double double great. You know, public transport is good. Buses are great. Trams are great. Um, dangleways can be applied and they're a bit novelty bit bit bespoke bit fiddly better to work out a tram you know even in the case of the dangle i'd almost argue that it's better to just put the tram on a you know put the tram up on a bridge that spans the river if you're going to do it that way but anyway um Vuppertal is steel wheels on steel rails but it does dangle it's suspended which is why i very carefully um i very carefully change the wording on this so I know that it gets caught steel wheels and steel rails. So if you want to call it a um, one of these things, if you really want to call it one of these things, I'm not going to shout and scream at you. But uh, everyone's going, Vuppertal has steel on steel, even if they're in the wrong place. Yeah, yeah. That, okay, so it might end up then. It does, uh, fine. It doesn't have on-street running. It does have dedicated tracks, so it's a light metro. So depending on what your what, what your definition of suspension is, it's either a dangleway or it's a light metro. Okay, okay, there we go. Um Yes, Vopertal is a very unique and special system, I know. And at some point, I'll find an excuse to ride on it, because I never have yet. Um, right, that's there. I'm going to put this here. I'm pinching my nose because I had a sneeze, because the light got in my eyes. Um, yes, if it's a metro, great. If it's not a metro, that's also great. The key thing is, don't let politicians pretend that something is more than it is, because the likelihood is that they are um, preventing you from getting better public transport. That's the issue here. Oh, oh my goodness. 
Uh, and yeah, I'm going to share, share the image out. Do more of these. Just pick, get the image, get it into paint and scribble where your where your public transport system. There's loads of suggestions in the chat that I just can't keep on top of because there's so many, which is great. I love you all. Um, not a metro. So put in the hashtag, uh, use the image that I'll post uh, on the Twitters and put in the Discord um, and have a play yourself and see what your systems are and, and, and continue to shout at me about why my system is dreadful. It's all part of the fun. I'm going to go, I'm going to go uh, big face actually briefly uh, for a couple of reasons. Firstly, uh, so that I can go in here and, and check a thing. So obviously, I'm going to go in here and check uh, check this lovely. Yeah, I'm going to do this. Then I'm going to go in, in here and, and click this button. Uh, why do I have to do this? Well, I have to do this because I need to check uh, this and this and this and this and that and also this and go in here and get that up there. Uh, lovely. Um, that's exciting. Ooh. Um, oh, very exciting. Oh, well, I'm looking at the results of the of the um, of the poll, um, working out what's what's happening with uh, with with that. Well, that's very exciting. Um, very exciting indeed. I'm quite pleased about that. In fact, incredibly pleased about that. I am um, marvelous. Uh, oh, that's that's very OK. Well, right. Enough of my waffling. Let's go back to OBS and, and go back to getting rid of my face. Uh, everyone, you've been great. Any 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 chats? Uh, do it. Change the ordering of, of questions. Oh, Deirdre, uh, I'll send I'll put the image in. Suggest the change of ordering of questions. Uh, that, that might be useful. I, I defer to your suggestions. Uh, thanks to people saying the task looks excellent. Thanks, Tom. Uh, much appreciated. Audio only. This was this. I don't know how this worked in audio only, but um, audio only supporters. Uh, yeah, the episodes are. They're almost getting into the drumbeat of me doing the audio episode and a week after the the video goes out. Uh, ideally, I'd do it earlier, but it is ending up like that. So long as it's reasonably regular, I, I hope you don't mind too much. Um, I, I'm trying to keep it reasonably regular. Anyway, so thanks to everyone listening in audio only form. Uh, what else am I going to say? I'm going to say. Patreon.com slash Gareth Dennis to support this sort of thing happening. Masket.co.uk to buy the merch. Uh, uh, PayPal.me slash Gareth Dennis to throw uh, coins at me with vigor and violence. And uh, for more of the chat that's been happening, uh, go to GarethDennis.co.uk slash Discord. Um, the, the Patreon is, yeah, uh, do it. Go subscribe. The, the Patreon support you give is incredibly helpful. Honestly, it really is. It really is. And the other thing to do is um, we're, we're bumping up in subscribers. We're reaching between seven and 8,000 subscribers. It would be great to hit the 10,000 mark because that means a thing happens. I don't know what the thing is, but I think you start help, you, know, you start getting elevated into other... Uh, into the algorithm starts chewing you into the system a bit more deeply. Um, uh, they get the tendrils into me and they start extracting my blood more rapidly. So uh, yeah, if you aren't if you aren't a subscriber, please do subscribe. Um, uh, yes, uh, Lin Manfu saying the audio episode is great. Thank you, Lin. You're in here watching this one live. Uh, that's great if you watch, listen to it again. But uh, that's dedication, my friend. Very dedication. Um, next week we have. Big Mood Energy, Alexander Rose is joining us to talk about gadget bands. The, the good fun of gadget bands, we're going to uh, talk about goofy American gadget bands from the 1970s. We, we might go a bit beyond that decade, but um, that's the provisional title. Um, I, I'm, I'm very excited. Do I, get a play, do I get a play button if I reach 10,000? I don't think I do. Uh, the channel becomes a gadget band at that point. Anyway, I'm distracting myself. Alexander's joining us next week, and I'm very excited for it. It's going to be really good fun. Um, Big Mood Energy... Uh, kind of part very much a, a friend of the of the um the Nate Bethay, uh extended universe so um uh, a, a, a genuine privilege to have um big mood energy joining us to talk about these gadget bands um alexandra i'm looking forward to it. it's gonna be very exciting so a drum roll if i'm gonna go back to big face a, a drum roll drum roll please everyone because uh actually i can just get rid of my face we have got the results of our of our vote the the, the votes are in everyone got involved um so uh yeah I'm, what is the result everyone what who who is it what won it well um i'm very pleased to say that the final decider the the, the round five final it, it did it it did it it did it look i just did it again it's drag oh my goodness cam Dreig. Sinetha Dreig is the winner. It's the winner. It's the winner. It's the winner. It's the winner. Uh, the Dragon Line. Uh, I'm very, very excited about that because that is, that's my favorite of the names that was suggested. I have to be honest. I think that's fun. Um, lots of drum rolls in the chat. Lovely job. Yeah. 137 votes. Okay. So clearly everyone was preoccupied watching this and not voting, but that's fine. Um, 
the vote came in at uh, it was a much shorter period, but it came in. It's it's pretty much exactly uh, one third to uh, Trail for the Travis Cymru and two thirds to the Dragon Line. Um, I, I, yeah, I'm quite pleased about that. I think that's awesome. Um, so we now have a name for it. Uh, watch this space. Uh, and so there it is the other egg. There, looking. I just did it again. Seneth of the Rig. I'd Gareth, correct me please. Two to one margin, yeah, it's not bad. Dragons, 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 dragons. Um I think it's uh it's awesome. It looks oh, I'm very excited. I think it, it it's that's a cool name. I think the dragon line is a cool name. Uh I'm gonna you can do some fun um gonna do some fun branding, I think, with what the line could potentially be. Uh I think it, I just yeah, I think it's cool. I think it's a cool name. I'm glad that Dragon Line won, I'm biased. But uh, given that this is the name that my proposals are now going to be as by Democratic-ish vote, um, I'm quite pleased about that. Because I don't think this is the last you're going to see of these proposals, frankly. Uh, in any case, everyone. Oh, yeah, we have to build it now. That's the rules. That is the rules. We have to build it. That's just, it, it doesn't, it's, uh, them's, them's the rules. Everyone, that's been, oh, it's just been so much fun. That was a fun episode, wasn't it? We distracted ourselves quite substantially. We do need dragon-branded rolling stock. Well, that's the thing, because with the white and the red, you could have a dragon coming. I, there are opportunities, you know, there are opportunities. The dragon line. Uh, yeah, the Welsh government did cut the air link today, actually. I should have put that in the news. They cut the, the north-south air link, which was the right thing to do. It was the right thing to do. It does look like dragon country, doesn't it, Lynn? Yeah, agreed. Um... I'll have to walk. I have to do some videos walking the route now and talking about what it'll actually physically look like. Um, if if I do get an email back, then oh, maybe I will have got the email back already. Let me go in here. If I've got an email now, there, which I haven't, but hopefully I will get an email. Uh, in any case, I might well see you on Good Morning Britain tomorrow, everyone. Uh, but you may not. Uh, let's see. Uh, I do keep catching myself and correcting my pronunciation, but I wish it was more in my brain. Uh, Detour is saying, here be dragons. Yeah, there's all the fun dragon chat. I'm quite pleased about that. Get to do some fun with that. Uh, I don't know how I'm going to... I'm going to continue to work on those plans behind the back, in the, in the, it, kind of in the background, uh, and, and harden them up a bit and, and, and put some thought into it and maybe capture it in a medium post or possibly even a little actual report. I might even do an Arcadis uh, think piece with it. You know, who knows? The North Smaug line. Yeah, very good, Tom. Okay, right, enough of me waffling. It's quarter past eight. Everyone, uh, that's been a, a genuinely cheered me up after a fairly miserable start to the week. So I'm feeling a bit better now. Um, I will see you all. Uh, I'll see you all next time. Cheerio, everyone. Cheerio.